On the world news tonight, the headlines. Old Nera note remain valid till December 31st, Supreme Court. Still on Old Nera note, no future president, CBN governor can obtain Supreme Court order, El Rufai. Buhari visits bonds, Maiduguri market, opens projects. And to another, FG appreciates foreign observers' missions. Moving on, legal battle begins as OB, Atiku, officially go to court. Lastly, on sport, the trophy is our next target. Flying Eagles defender reacts. On the news tonight, I am Mori Re Rebila Lawa. The Supreme Court on Friday nullified the ban by the Central Bank of Nigeria on the use of the old 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1000 Naira banknotes as legal tenders. Politics Nigeria report that the Apex Court in a unanimous decision by a seven-member panel of justice held that the whole banknote should remain valid legal tender until December 31st, 2023. It held that the old Naira note should be used Currently, with the redesigned Nero North, Justice Emmanuel Agin, who read the leaked judgments, stated the plenary objections by the defendant, the Attorney General of the Federation, Bayosa, and Edo State, are dismissed as the court has the registration to hear the suits. The court said the narrow redesign policy has led to some Nigerians engaging in trade by butter in the bid to survive, adding that President Mohamed Buhari's disobedience of its February 8th order is a sign of dictatorship. Going on to the next story, Governor Nasu Erufai of Kaduna State said no incoming president or governor of Central Bank of Nigeria can obtain the current ruling of the Supreme Court or the old narrow north. Erufai stated these while speaking with newsmen after the judgment of the Apex Court on the old narrow note on Friday today. He said the policy of currencies confiscation where you deposit money in the bank and the bank chooses not to give you is illegal and shall end forthwith. So Nigerians can go to bank and collect whatever they have deposited and get on with their lives. It's not a rebellion, it's a reform to make Nigeria better. And with this judgment, no further president or governor of the central bank can come and announce a policy that ambushes the lives and livelihood of Nigerian people anymore, he said. Recall that the Supreme Court on Friday nullified the ban on use of the old 200 Naira, 500 Naira and 1000 Naira banknotes as legal tender. The Apex Court, in a unanimous decision by a seven-member panel of justice, held that the old banknotes should remain valid legal tenders until December 31st. APC members, the president of Nigeria is from the APC, but we disagreed with him on this policy and its implementation. And when we tried everything to settle this behind closed doors, we had no option but to come to the Supreme Court. We are very grateful to the court for its unanimous decision and the orders it has given to the government, federal government of Nigeria to ensure that from today till the 31st of December 2023, the old Naira notes of all denominations shall continue to circulate side by side with the new Naira notes. That's the major decision of the Supreme Court. The other decision is that the policy of currency confiscation where you deposit money in the bank and the bank chooses what to give you is unlawful and illegal and shall end forthwith. So Nigerians can go to the bank and collect whatever they have deposited and get on with their lives. Those that said that we went to the court because of elections are wrong. We went to the court because our people in our states are suffering and businesses in our states are coming to a halt and lives were being destroyed. That's why we went to court. We left elections in the hands of God 
and we all know the result. Even though this policy was designed to ensure that we did not win the presidential elections, we have won. But the policy must go because the Supreme Court has now decided that it was unlawfully conceived, it was unlawfully implemented, and the Supreme Court has extended the legal tender status of all our notes, old and new, at least to 31st December. And if before 31st December we feel the need to come back to the court, I will not be a governor then, but these two, by the grace of God, will still be governors. They will come back to the Supreme Court if we need to extend it further. But we hope that will not be necessary. That is all I have to say. I would like my colleagues who started this reform journey with me, because it's not rebellion, it's reform. We came to the Supreme Court to make Nigeria better. And by this judgment, no future president or central bank governor can come and announce a policy that ambushes the lives and the livelihoods of Nigerian people anymore. We are very... On the news, the president, Major General Muhammadu Buhari, retired and Thursday visited the popular markets in Maiduguri, Bruno State, where fire gutted over 13,000 shops and destroyed goods worth billions of naira last Sunday. Buhari also commiserated with the government and people of the state on the unfortunate incident. According to a statement on Thursday by a special assistant on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, Buhari visited the market still smothering five days after, along with Governor Babagana Zulum of Bruno State, Vice President elect Kashim Shaitima, members of the Federal Executive Council, and some eminent citizens of the state. The statement was titled President Bo'ari Tours Rims of Maiduguri Monday Market as FG donate relief items to victims. Although the cause of the fire was not immediately known, eyewitnesses say it started between 2.30 a.m. and 3 a.m. During his visit, Bo'ari was also at the palace of the Shewu of Bernou, Abakar El Kanemi, to register his condolences to the indigents of the state. I am delighted to be here with the Shehu and the good people of Renu State to commiserate with you on the unfortunate Monday market fire incident, Buhari said. On our path, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Saidiya Farouk, told the President she was still assessing the level of damage. After the assessment, the Ministry will submit a full report to Mr. President to speak special intervention she added. In the meantime, however, the federal government has released 20,000 bags of rice, 20,000 bags of maize and condiments as immediate relief materials to the victims of a fire incident. The state governor, Zulum, said the market was built in the 1970s, adding that government had provided an immediate support of 1 billion naira to the victims. A video. Of government intervention. So far, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development has provided emergency relief items to victims, and more and more would be coming from the federal government. Worked hand in hand with Borno State government to uh, recover, but unfortunately, there's nothing to recover, and assessment is ongoing, Your Excellency. Uh, we have provided uh, relief uh, support in terms of uh, food items, and uh, I have directed that the assessment should continue, and uh, we are going to also uh, support with building materials in collaboration. Following the successful conduct of the presidential and national assembly election, the federal government has appreciated the international observer missions deployed to Nigeria for the poll held on Saturday, February 25, 2023. The federal government, in a statement issued on Thursday by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, spokesperson Francisca Omayuli said the support from observers contributed immensely to the promotion of democratic process in Nigeria, especially for the forthcoming governorship and state assembly elections. The statement reads, the Nigerian government expresses appreciation to the international community, civil society organizations and other development partners for their support and the deployment of various high-level observation missions to Nigeria for the presidential and parliamentary elections. 
The conduct of the largely peaceful polls is a pointer to Nigeria's commitment to the promotion of good governance and democratic principles. Nigeria counts on the continued goodwill of the international community as the government work together to consolidation of democracy in the country. Moving on to the next story. There seems no end in the sight to the wrangling trilling. The 2023 presidential election as Atiku Aubakar of the People's Democratic Party, PDP and Labour Party Peter Obi have approached the presidential election court, PEC, Abuja, seeking an order to allow them to inspect materials used for the February 25th poll. Their request is contained in a two expert motions they both filed at the PEC Secretariat at the Court of Appeal, Abuja, earlier this week. Information learned both motions have been listed for hearing today. Atiku's motion was filed on Wednesday, March 1st, while Obi's file is on on Thursday. Meanwhile, six states of the Federation, Adamawa, Akwaibom, Bayosa, Delta, Edo, and Sokoto have also dragged the federal government before the Supreme Court over the conduct, collation, and announcement of the February 25, 2023 presidential and national assembly elections. Moving further, Bola Tinumbu, the president elect on Thursday, said. Peter Obi, presidential candidate of the Labour Party, should not mislead gullible Nigerians. Information reporter Tinubu spoke through the chief spokesperson of his campaign council, Festus Kiyamu San, and the press statement obtained by the newspaper APC Chieftain refuted Obi's claim that the Labour Party won the 2023 presidential election, adding that the former Anambra state governor is determined to delegitimize the mandate freely given to president-elect by majority of Nigerians. The number statement read, We make this brief statement in reaction to the press briefing held earlier today by the defeated candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, wearing acknowledged pension for spewing falsehood. He made the outlandish claim before the world that he won the 2023 presidential election, but he was robbed of the victory. Mr. Obi is always quick to cite some isolated incidents of irregularities outside his stronghold that could not have substantially affected the outcome of the result in those areas, whereas he deliberately fails to comment on tons and tons of evidence circulating everywhere, wherein his supporters in his stronghold engage in toggery, hooliganism, violence and outright falsifications of figures against our party and our supporters. He pretends to play the victim where he is the greatest culprit in this game of brickbats. Moving on to the next story. Three persons have been reported dead in an accident that happened in Ogo State today. The road crash also injured three persons, while the remaining two persons of the eight passengers involved were rescued on earth. Information report that the crash occurred at 7.10 a.m. on Friday at a U-turn close to Total Petrol Station. A total of eight persons were involved. All male adults, three persons, sustained various degrees of injuries. Two were on off and unfortunately three persons were recorded killed. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRC, told Daily Post correspondent. According to FRC spokesperson in Ogo State, Florence Opey, the crash involved three vehicles, a Toyota IS bus with registration number MNA, 48Z, a man diesel truck registered with number ABC 682ZW, and a DAF truck marked T3756LA. Upway attributed the crash to overspeeding, which she said led to a loss of control on the part of the truck driver, who reportedly rammed into the Julius Beggar truck while he was about to make a U turn before the Toyota boss head on collision. In case you're just joining, you are watching the world news from BGI TV. Next to come. A 19-year-old man from Plato State has reportedly killed himself over the loss of the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, in the February 25, 2023 election in Nigeria. According to available information, his lifeless body was found hanging from a rope in an uncomputed building. The yet-to-be-identified young man, said to be one of the supporters of Obi, popularly known as Obedient, left a note behind. The Independent National Electoral Commission 
had in early hours of March 1st, 2023, declared the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC, Ashwaji Bola Ahmed Tinobu, as winner of the presidential election. Obi came third after the, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar. Both Obi and Atiku on Thursday said they will be heading to the court to challenge the outcome of the election. Obi said he has evidence to prove he won the election. From that story, we go to the foreign story. Several Nigerians, as well as their Ivorians, have fled their homes in Tunisia in the face of state sanctioned attacks, taking refuge on the premises of their country's embassy. They were attacked by Tunisian nationals, as President K said, continues to deepen discrimination and unfair prejudice against dark skinned people from Africa. Mr. Said recently announced that sub saharan migrants were on a mission to weaken the country's Islamic Arab identity and their presence in the country has to end. There is a criminal plan to change the composition of the demographic landscape in Tunisia and some individuals have received large sums of money to give residence to sub saharan migrants, he said in statement. Mr. Said also spoke at the country's National Security Council meeting, conveyed on the matter and referred to the migrants who have sustained the country's informal economy with surplus, cheap labor as all of illegal migrants. To end the world news this hour is a sports story. Flying Eagles defender Abel Oguchu has reflected on team's hard end victory against Uganda on Thursday. Ladon Bosu side pipped the Ipos 1-0 with Ibrahim Juma diverting the ball into his own net in the 38th minute. The Flying Eagles will be among Africa's four representatives at the 2023 FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Indonesia after securing a spot in the semi-final. The centre-back will make his first appearance in the competition following Daniel Bamey's suspension, said the team has achieved the first objective coming into the tournament. It is a great feeling to win and it was our dream from the start of the tournament to get to the World Cup ticket and down, we are looking forward to taking the trophy all, Oguche said at his post-match press conference. Before we call it a wrap on the world news, here comes some major headlines. Old narrow note remain valid, Supreme Court says. No future president, CBN governor can obtain Supreme Court verdicts, L. Rufai. And on sports, the trophy is our next target, Flying Eagles Defender says. For more updates on YouTube, our handle is Babagbagede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all, to access our broadcast. On Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of goods and services, coverage of events and functions, Please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placements only. I am Mori Ray Rebila Lawa. Good evening and Jumat Mufida to all faithful Muslims all around the world. Oh, na -na -na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and gist, no stress, oh, just want to be GITV. BGI time, that one in the video.